Well, it's the third week in March, and you know what that means, sports fans. Yeah, it's football season in Texas, kind of. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on into another episode of Locked On Baylor. Happy Wednesday to you. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. I'm your host, Cam Stewart of ESPN Central Texas. And they do say there are only two seasons here in Texas. Football season and spring football season. And the second of which is upon us now as the Baylor Bears had their first spring practice yesterday. And they are already making headlines. And not in a good way but also one that they can't really control. Uh, But yeah, I guess it is still basketball season. It's the best basketball season of the year. You guys know I'm a big basketball guy. So I am going to tell you why the Baylor Bears might not be able to win the national championship and also how they might be able to break that mold. And some big news for a returner from the women's basketball team. Fan favorite, Jana Van Geitenbeek made a big special announcement yesterday and it means you might be seeing her in the near and far future for you Baylor Lady Bears fans. But starting first, Baylor spring football started yesterday. Um, obviously an exciting time. It's a brand new team in terms of the staff. <laughs> You're talking about a 3-9 and nine team from a year ago, and they retained a lot of their roster. We'll see if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but they had to change around a lot in terms of the football coaching staff. Dave Aranda keeps his job. It divides the fan base for sure, but whether you like it or not, he's back. Brings in Jake Spavadol, the guy that I thought was a terrific hire, and still do, uh, for the offensive coordinator position to succeed Jeff Grimes, and a a ton of position coaches coming in. Chris Kapilovic comes in and then leaves. Does the Abe Simpson just gif of, Taking his hat, going in, whistling, and then walking right out the door. He goes to Alabama. Mason Miller in. Christian Robinson out. Jamar Chaney in. Uh, More position coaches than you could have dreamed of come in through the doors for Baylor in this offseason. So a a weird, weird start to the offseason for sure. But now it's about getting the pads on and playing ball. And there are some exciting things about this Baylor team. Now, one of the downsides, I will start with the downside here, is it's kind of funny. We thought at this point last year, defensively, the power's still up front. You know, it's not what it was a couple years ago, but, you know, you don't have Sayaki Ika, but you still got a guy like Gabe Hall, who you can depend on, TJ Franklin, who you can depend on. And then there was question marks in the defensive backfield. A bunch of new guys, young guys you knew were going to have to step up and step into those roles. Flash forward to March 2024, and we feel pretty good about the defensive backfield. Still young, Caden Jenkins, DJ Coleman, those kind of guys in the defensive backfield. You feel good about that. And now you're starting to worry up front. And those worries were just compounded in the first day of spring practice. There was some inexperience there, especially in the middle of that front four, specifically at nose tackle. Well, we got a couple of updates yesterday. Uh, Jarrell Boykins Jr., who transferred in just last year from uh, Hutchinson Community College, junior college, was you know poised to be a starter at nose tackle. Unfortunately for him, he had to medically retire from football. And so you're like, oh man, that that's a real bummer. You know, that's that's something that we see every year. It's it's really unfortunate. It's that's not something these guys can really control. Uh, and then later in the day, the news breaks for Trey Emery, another nose tackle for the Baylor Bears, medically retired from football. Two medical retirements at the same position in the same day for the Bears, or at least broken to the public in the same day. Uh, that that stinks, man. That really stinks for those guys who. You know, they they put in the grind, they grinded through a three and nine season, just like the rest of those guys out there. And and you can't do it anymore. And it really stinks. Like it reminds me of that that line from the movie Moneyball, which is of course about baseball, but I think it rings true with football as well. We're all told at some point we can't play the, the child's game anymore. You know, whether we're 18 or 50, we're we're told. And these guys got told um pretty recently here. So Thoughts and prayers out to them to some degree. I hope that they can, you know, continue to 
to live a healthy lifestyle and, and get their degrees here at Baylor, but that stinks. And now Baylor has to really look uh, hard at the transfer portal in May after spring games. Uh, that's when the portal opens up again. They have to attack the portal at that position. And it, it's a weird one for coaches to look at because I mean, we don't really have an idea of who's going to go in the portal for any team at that point in the season, because that, I mean, that's like, you know, guys who get cut at the end of training camp in the NFL, it's guys who lost out on their positional battles. So, you know, you can't even really keep tabs until then. So a, a tough situation right there for, for those guys specifically, but also for, for Baylor as a whole looking, looking uh, at the nose tackle position already, just taking shots, man, uh, one day into, into spring football. And we've got to report two medical retirements, but I will say, you know, obviously the energy is going to be there for a new coaching staff. And I am a little excited about ca cautiously optimistic, but cautiously excited, I guess, of kind of the verbiage and the things that we're hearing from these new coaches. Uh, let me explain that. I'm not a Baylor propaganda machine. I understand that this is very, very early and it we probably won't even see those effects this next year. Okay, this team will be scratching and clawing for a bowl game, I think. But we talked about offensively. They are going back to that spread style, that Art Brile style of offense that was so successful for them 10 years ago. I mean, the most successful period in Baylor football history, not even close. So I love that they're going back to that. And they've got a coach who is committed to that in Jake Spavadol, who has had success in that style of offense in the past. And we've heard Dallas Baker, the receivers coach, talk about how excited he is to get into that. You think you've got your quarterback to do it in Daquan Finn. And, and Sawyer Robertson ran a similar style in high school when he was a four-star guy uh, out in Lubbock. So that part's exciting. And then I hear Jamar Chaney, on the Matt Mosley show on ESPN Central Texas weekdays from 3 to 6 Central Time, which you can hear me on as well. Uh, he did an interview, Jamar Chaney did, the new inside linebackers coach with Matt Mosley. And just the things he was talking about sounded a lot like Phil Bennett. And I know Phil Bennett is not like, you know, the Buddy Ryan of college football defensive coordinators. But the things that Chaney was talking about was that you know, smash mouth, physicality. That's what we're looking at here. And to me, that's exactly what you would look for in a defense that would complement a spread style of offense. That is to say, even if it's going well, you're not going to see them keep teams under 20 points because your offense is scoring fast. But what you do focus on is turnovers and knocking the other team in the mouth and wearing them down uh, and that would complement your offense. So, again, we're not, I'm not saying it's going to be you know 2014 Baylor this next year. That's going to take some time. But they're clearly committing to that style of football. Because after Bryles, you, you didn't see that commitment to that style. You know, Matt Rule was all smash mouth, both sides of the ball, working in the trenches. And that, that worked for sure, but it was not the exciting style. With Dave Aranda... You didn't hear much of anything, as a matter of fact. He wasn't preaching the way Matt Rule was. But it was, again, smash mouth, trenches, which led them to success, some success in 2021. But when you're talking about uh, the style of play that they're looking to get back to, that they were in the mid-2010s, you're not as focused on you know the, the Oklahoma drill as much as you are. We still want to keep physical, but we know our speed and our spread style is what's going to get us there. And I can't wait to talk about the new receivers in here, the quarterback battle that's going on, but not a great optimistic first day of camp with the medical retirement, but this is going to be a fun one to cover throughout this spring ball and into the spring game to see how the rest of this team looks and how it's going to hopefully take on the identity of those teams in the 20 in the mid 2010s at least for, you know, on the field. We've got a new sponsor for today's Locked on Baylor episode, and that is our friends over at Better Together. Okay, you've played daily fantasy sports. We know that. But how about this edge to it? You can play it 
with a friend. I know. Okay. So it's got a familiar experience to all those who, all those of you who do daily fantasy sports, but with that twist of playing with a teammate, as I like to say, okay, it shows that synergy working together gives you better chances at winning two brains better than one. If it's me with most of my friends, we combine for one brain. So that's great. And it creates a shared experience. So you're having fun going with it. You're winning together you're losing together, and it puts your group chat to the ultimate test, okay? Now you can back it up with actual evidence of whether you guys are good betters or not, okay? So for those of you, my friends here in Texas, download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using the promo code Locked On for a free $5 entry into any of those NCAA basketball contests on there. So remember the code, Locked On, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-M, because winning alone is fun, but of course, it's better together. You see what I did there? I like that they pulled that one out there for me. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Okay, passion, drive, patience. What brings home that winning trophy in March is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to that peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, anything you need or want, they have. In fact, I've worked on it for my fluid car situation. It helps out a ton. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because we want you burning rubber. We don't want you burning cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the final four MOP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only and exclusions do apply. It is still basketball season, even though we've started spring football. In fact, it's the most exciting time of, of basketball season because we are heading into the big dance. There's no turning back now. You've got your dancing shoes on. We are ready to embrace the madness. It all starts on Friday in Memphis. I will be there. I'll be doing shows from there. I can't wait to get the pulse of whatever they call the city nickname for Memphis. I can't wait to be out there. Elvis's backyard, Beale Street, barbecue, Mark Cohn, all of it. And Baylor taking on Colgate. We're going to have a full Colgate preview tomorrow as well, by the way. Uh, but so much of this is a numbers game when you get to March. Okay, there are Cinderella runs that get to the Final Four. They don't. They very rarely actually win the national championship. It is. It is a game of numbers, just like any other sport. You know, even with that excitement in there and some of the Cinderellas, it it still does come down to that. So I saw this interesting thread. Uh, come across my timeline the other day. Connor Allen, who covers the NFL mostly, but loves March Madness, went in there with a number standpoint. And he goes, when you look at the last 21 years, which is really the kind of the Ken Palm era, there are two qualifications that over 95% of March Madness national champions have in that span. Using the pre-tournament Ken Palm metrics of previous national champions, there are two that stand out. Adjusted offensive efficiency, Adjusted defensive efficiency. Okay. 95% of national champions have ranked 21st or better in adjusted offensive efficiency. The only one that didn't was that Kevin Ollie, Shabazz Napier 2014 UConn team. They were the only one. They were was well within that in, in 2021. They were the third ranked. Uh, adjusted offensive efficiency, best three-point shooting team in the nation that year. And I look at this year's Baylor team. Oh boy, are they going to fit into that category? You know, we've seen that great offense when it's great, but it's been up and down. They're comfortably in that. They need to be 21st or better. They are sixth in the nation. Okay, so that's the first one. All right, we dodged that bullet. The other one, 95% of winners ranked 37th or better in adjusted def defensive efficiency margin. Okay, and 100% ranked 44th, but 95% are 37th or better pre pre tournament Ken Palm. So that's what we're looking at. Bad news, bad news, Baylor fans. Bears are not even close. They're 64th in that category. Now this is obviously all in pre tournament. When you look at post tournament, it allows for a lot of teams to move up because you know Ken Palm's all adjusted. So you're playing good teams if you play four or five good teams in a row, tournament teams in a row, those things go up. 
So Baylor is 64th in that. They're not close to that 37th. Now, if you were listening closely, you'll realize I said 95% of the teams in the last 21 years that have won it have been in the top 37. 100% have been in the top 44. That's because the only outlier outside of the 37th, 2021, the Baylor Bears were 44th. I think a lot of people forget that. They moved into like the, I think, 27th by the end of the year. But we kind of forgot that because they were just a good, solid defensive team all year. And it certainly showed in that championship game against Gonzaga. Uh, it showed in the semifinals against uh, against Houston. It showed in the Sweet 16 in the second half and that comeback against Villanova. They were a good, good defensive team. So that shows you just how good you need to be to be a national championship team. That, that, that Baylor team was actually the outlier there. So it kind of brings me to the question that we've been bouncing back and forth on all year long. Is this Baylor team a good defensive team or a good enough defensive team to make a deep run in the tournament? Are they good enough to make a run? Yes. Yes. And I'm talking like Final Four good. They can absolutely be that good. Um, but it has been Jekyll and Hyde this year. And when they've really relied on the man-to-man, -man, it hasn't necessarily been great. Now, this team has good disruptive defenders. Obviously, Eve Misi, rim protector, shot blocker, absolutely. Jalen Bridges, long arms. His defense has gotten even better as this season has gone along. He can shut down passing lanes. Very disruptive. Jaden Nunn, good on-ball defender. Probably not great. Not Davion Mitchell, great, obviously. Um, Jacoby Walter, more of a disruptor than a great one-on-one -on -one defender. So that's why they're so good in a zone is they can their their team defending can get them anywhere but that individual defending it it leaves something to be desired and that's why it, it took so long for Scott Drew to go to the man to man defense because it wasn't until the late 2010s and into the early 2020s that college teams were really spacing the floor which which kind of forces you into man to man a lot of the time. And that's advantage offense. So is, is the defense good enough to win a national championship? I don't, I don't think so right now. Have we seen them go on three or four game stretches where their defense is off the charts against some of the best competition in the country? Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Talk about keeping teams in the big 12 under 65, 70 points in the meat of the Big 12 schedule. That is nothing to sneeze at, man. That's that's a pretty good mark right there. So can they do it? Yes. But looking at the metrics, they're off. They're not in that national championship metrics. They're also a three seed. They're not a lot of not a lot of people are saying, hey, Bay, we're national champions. Although I don't know about you guys, but I am seeing a lot of popular pick is Baylor in that final four. They're not feeling great about North Carolina. They're not feeling great about Arizona. Uh, that's become a popular pick. Can they get there with this defense? I think so. If the threes are falling offensively, that allows them to take more chances defensively. I think they can get there. But if you're talking about the best of the best, when it comes to those metrics, they aren't there. They aren't there. But then again, there's one outlier in both of those. Both of those categories it was UConn in one. It was Baylor in the other. So, It's March, man. Anything can happen. And I know you guys all know that, but anything can happen. All right. We are bringing you a new team each week with that drive towards cutting down the nets. It is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Like I said, each week, each, each episode, we have them on. We're picking a team that stands out, that pushes it further than the rest, just like these all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. And this week, I'm looking at the Nissan Rogue, and I am calling them the GCU Lopes. Yes, Grand Canyon, okay? Because this team, Bryce Drew led Lopes, they are in the tournament every year now. They're nailed on tournament team. None of you had even heard of Grand Canyon before a few years ago. And most of you still don't know that they have an actual campus and they're not just an online school, but they are in the big dance all the time. Thanks to Bryce Drew. And that's why they are surprising everybody. 
just like the way that Nissan Rogue surprises a lot of people with the cargo space that they can keep and the luxury that they can give you as well. So keep pushing, Lopes. Maybe we'll see you here in this West region. I like I like Bryce Drew's team a lot. And if they can get past St. Mary's, they can go pretty far. So you can take the Nissan Rogue, the Pathfinder, or the Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Drive it out to Memphis, and I will see you there on the highway and in the city itself. Shop Nissan. USA.com. From men's basketball over to women's basketball, it has been a long wait for our women's basketball team as they last played, oh, what do we say now? Like a week and a half ago, 11 days ago, since they lost to Iowa State and got knocked out of the Big 12 tournament. Uh, so they've just been waiting around. Uh, they're making the trip to Blacksburg, I'm sure, today. Uh, for their game on Friday, they're waiting the awaiting the winner of the playing game between Vanderbilt and Columbia. Uh, int intriguing matchup round one before hopefully facing uh, moving on to face the four seeded and the host, the Virginia Tech Hokies. But big news finally coming out of women's basketball, and that is from Baylor guard Jana Jana Van Geitenbeek, who had a year of eligibility left, didn't know whether she was going to take it. Well, she did her best. Jordan Belfort impression yesterday and said, I'm not leaving. I'm not in leaving. And she's coming back for one more year in Waco. And if you are a Lady Bears fan, you should be doing cartwheels right now because Jana Van Geitenbeek has stepped up big time for this team down the stretch. And you have got a good core coming back and not the least of which being the two that announced they were coming back, Jana and Sarah Andrews to provide some nice depth in the backcourt. But Jana Van Geitenbeek has been big stepping up for this team and playing a lot of, of point for them. Uh, just a terrific ball mover. You know, remember Scott Drew said that about Dale Bonner. I see a lot of that in Jana Van Geitenbeek as well. She is, she has been a floor general for her, like for Nikki Collin, like really stepped into that role. And I'm looking at, the way she finished the regular season, the last six games of the regular season, six, she had at least three assists in each of those games. So, you know, you look at the numbers and you're like, oh, five points, three assists. Oh, okay. But then you watch the games and you're like, she, she has these people on strings. She is controlling this game right now. And that's definitely what you saw down the stretch. So, as a Baylor fan, so excited to see that she is coming back, uh, that they are bringing a lot of talent back. You know, talk about her, Sarah Andrews, uh, you know, Bella Fauntleroy, obviously, Dariana Little Page Bugs, uh, Yaya Felder. They have got a lot going for them coming back next year. Do they need some help in the post? Yeah, probably. Um, I'm sure. But right now, when you're talking about how many players are coming back, which has not been a given for Baylor the last couple of years, uh, that is a big, big step in the right direction for te keeping team cohesion in what is a big year for this program and for Coach Nikki Collin coming up next year. So talk about a big ups. I mean, Jana Van Guyton be coming back is probably a bigger announcement than than you might realize because it's not just the, the last couple of weeks of this season. She has grown so much as a player since she's gotten here. Um, does have national championship experience, remember? Has a ring from Stanford in her first year before she transferred to Baylor. But it, it's not unreasonable to think that that growth is going to continue uh, going into next year with a more defined role. I'm sure that was something she she might have struggled with along the way of, hey, what's my role on this team? You know, we've got some great backcourt players. Where do I fit into this? Now she knows. And she has a whole offseason knowing that. And she's obviously got the whole support of her teammates behind her. This has been a very supportive team uh, for for people kind of figure thing, figuring things out in the last two seasons. Uh, you know, we mentioned the injury troubles last year and so many girls having to step up and found their roles. Well, not necessarily the injury crisis, but we saw that through the last half of this season as well. So Jana Van Guyton be coming back. Tony Van Guyton be coming back, staying on Twitter throwing out these sometimes embarrassing videos, but always hyping up her daughter, which is what we love to see. And we hope to be hyping her up as well next year too. 
So anyway, let me know what you think about Jana Van Guyten be coming back in the Lady Bears' chances, not only this weekend, but hopefully further in the tournament and looking ahead towards next year. I know they're focused on the task at hand right now, but can't help but get excited about their chances next year as well with all that they're bringing back. Is this Baylor men's defense good enough to get them to the promised land? Drop that down in the comments below. And how are you feeling about spring football? Am I putting too much into it? What do you look for in these kind of spring football sessions? What will you look for in the spring game as we're about a month away from that? Drop all of that down in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Um, be sure to tell your friends about it. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. We're going to have that Colgate preview tomorrow on your favorite show, which is, of course, Locked on Baylor.